Good morning, my dear students. Good morning, Good morning sir. sir. How are you? Fine, sir. Okay. Today we shall talk about phonetics. Well, the word word phonetics comes from the Greek word phone. Now, phone is a very familiar word with you all. What does phone mean? Phone means sound, like you have telephone. Telephone, that means sound from a distance. Okay, so the word phonetics comes from the Greek word phone, which denotes sound or voice. Phonetics is a branch of linguistics and it deals with production, combination, description, and representation of sounds of human speech. Remember, human speech I'm talking about. Okay, human speech. We are concerned with the human speech only. So I repeat, phonetics is a branch of linguistics that deals with production, combination, description and representations of sounds of human speech. Since it is a scientific study of human speech, it is more popularly known as the science of pronunciation. So what do we learn in phonetics? We learn pronunciation. Okay. So, if you are really working hard and uh, keenly trying to understand these symbols, these IPA symbols, I am sure you would be able to improve your pronunciation. So, therefore, my dear students, if somebody asks you, what is phonetics, then you may say that phonetics is the study of speech sounds. It is a science of pronunciation. Okay? So you understand? What is it? Phonetics is the study of speech sounds. Speech sounds. And it is the science of pronunciation. Science of pronunciation. Science of pronunciation. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Well, some students ask me, what is the need of studying phonetics? Why should we study it? Okay, so if I ask you how many letters are there in the English alphabet? 26. 26. Well, the English alphabet, as you know, has only 26 letters. However, there are 44 sounds, and some letters sometimes are not pronounced at all. Why? Because they have a silent existence. So, can you tell me one or two words which have a silent existence? Honest. Honest, for example. Now, here. H is silent. And one or two more words? Walk. Walk. Okay, walk. What is silent here? L is silent. Of, for instance, talk. L is silent. So this is not the case with the Indian languages. For example, Urdu and Hindi. Whatever we write, we speak. And whatever we speak, we write. So that is why, you know, it is very uh, baffling for the uh, second learners of English language. Why? Because some words are si silent and you know some uh, uh, letters of English alphabet have different sounds. So moreover a huge number of words are borrowed into English from different other languages like Greek, Latin, Italian, German and French and many other languages languages you already done borrowing so you know that many, many words have come from different languages of the world into English and it is quite obvious that in many cases the languages of origin influence how the words are pronounced for example now I take a word this word you already know and you have studied this also while we were studying about fiction writing Okay. Yeah. Now, this would be the spelling would be very baffling for an Indian student or for any second learner of English language, a non-native learner. I mean, even the pronunciation would be very baffling because what is what is the pronunciation? De nu ma, de nu ma. How do we describe it? We describe it day, day, 
nu ma. This is how it is described. Genuma. Do you understand this? Yes, sir. And like one who doesn't know the pronunciation might say denouement, which will be very absurd, very awkward, very weird. So this is not a case with Hindi, Urdu and other languages that we have in India that are spoken in India. What we write, we speak and what we speak, we write. Therefore, to solve this vexing issue, the International Phonetic Alphabet, remember this, this is very important. These symbols, you know, which I have uh, like uh, written here, they are IPA, IPA, International Phonetic Alph Alphabet, International, International Phonetic Alphabet. They are not this always. Although, as I, as we you know, discussed, that there are twenty six letters in the English alphabet, where as there are forty four symbols, that is uh, forty four IPA symbols. International in international phonetic alphabet, how many symbols do we have? We have forty four. Out of forty four, twelve are vowels. 8 are diphthongs and 24 are consonants. Okay. So therefore, to solve this uh, vexing issue, vexing, why? This is vexing and it's baffling, it's confusing, uh, it's puzzling for the Indian students or for the second learners of English language. IPA has evolved these 44 symbols or sounds. The IP provides a symbol you may call it phoneme as well. Phoneme. These symbols, they, they are called as phoneme also. Okay. So these phoneme for each sound, so the correct pronunciation can be written or printed in dictionaries. An accurate knowledge of IP symbols help in decoding words and pronouncing them correctly. Okay. If you know these IP symbols, you would be able to uh, to know. Uh, miss, you would know how to pronounce it correctly how to write it correctly, how to spell it correctly. If you do not have any knowledge of these symbols, I am sorry, you won't be able to speak with the right pronunciation. Now, you know, these days, most of us, I mean, in, in India, English has become a very common language. Every third person knows how to speak English. I mean, educated person I am talking about. But their pronunciation is very weird. Why is it? Because they are not familiar with these symbols. So once you have mastered these symbols, you would be able to speak English in a better way, with right pronunciation, with right accent. So this is the purpose of this uh, video. Now here, you know, I have made a diagram. This is a diagram for tongue, you may say. Okay. Diagram, say diagrammatic representation of tongue. This is what it is. So this is front of the tongue, front of the tongue. This is central part of the tongue and that is back part of the tongue. This is this is close, okay? And this is half close, this is half open, and this is open. And same is there, open, half open, half close, and close. So these symbols that you see here, these vowels, what are these? How many are there? There are 12 in total. And these symbols, or these phonemes are vowels. They are the vowels that we have in IPA. So what I am trying to say that these are the front vowels, these are the back vowels and the one which you have there within this green portion, okay, green lines, they are the central vowels. This is, what is it? This is a diagram of a tongue, you know, diagrammatic representation of tongue. And sometimes in exam you have, say, Three term description, three term description of these symbols. Suppose you ask, for example, if you don't understand anything, please do not hesitate to ask. Because this is like mathematics. If you know the symbols, if you know how to transcribe words correctly, if you know how to pronounce 
or if, if you know how to spell, you get 100% marks. And if you don't know, then what happens? You score very poor marks. So you, you, there are two extremes. Either you get 80% marks or 40% marks. So let us take this symbol. I, see here it is marked. So you may see that this is front, front vowel. And this is front close vowel, close, close position. And when you pronounce it, your lips are spread. E. Let me pronounce them for you first. E. E. This is long E. If, see, you may notice that uh, here there are dots. Here also you have dots against the symbol. And here too you have dots there also. So you have these dots against five of these vowels. Out of these twelve, five have these dots against them. In, fr in front of them. So what does that mean? That means they are prolonged vowels. They are prolonged vowels. These are all short vowels and they are prolonged ones. So this is E. Okay. This is E. So what is E? E is a front close unrounded vowel. Front close unrounded. Why? Because your lips do not see when when I uh, saying unrounded or rounded. When you say oo, your lips are rounded. When you say o, oh, again your lips are rounded. But when you say e, your lips are spread. So this is front close unrounded vowel. Okay. And this is a symbol of this. Where do you have this vowel e? E, you have in words like sheep. Hmm? Just tell me one or two words from your side. Weak. Weak. Okay. Weak with uh, double E or say weak with A. Both have long E. Weak. Any other word? Eat. Eat. Good. Eat. Eat. Right? So all these words, they have this sound, E sound, long E sound. Well, we can do one thing. We can write the three different positions of this E, E, like E as he said. You, you may have this initial, medial, and final. Side by side, you know, we, we shall understand these symbols, okay, the three term description, and we shall also discuss the three different positions, initial, medial, and final, because sometimes in exam you are asked like this. Earlier I was just write, writing it uh, arbitrarily, then I thought that it's better to write all the three positions, though all these symbols do not have all the three positions, but E at least has, E, E as he said. Eat. And how do you transcribe it? How do you transcribe? You transcribe eat like this. E and ta. And then you close it between two slant lines. This is very important, my dear students. That whenever you are transcribing an English word, always close it within two slant lines. Eat. Okay? Now, another word I take, ease. For example, ease. Now this is sa, but this is giving you za sound. That is why you know IPA symbols are required. That is why you know you you you, you need to study phonetics. And if you say ease, this is wrong. Ease. This is how you transcribe it. Ease. Yes. Any other word? Ease, for example. East. So here you have sa sound. So you know, same letters sometimes give you sa sound and sometimes give you za sound. That is why it is baffling. Okay, it's very confusing. East. So again, and this transcription is very easy. You know, just just if you know the right pronunciation, then 
you can even transcribe them where east so here this e sound is occurring initially eaves drop a long word you may take eaves you know what does it means eaves drop eaves drop eaves drop yes listening somebody talks furtively okay like suppose you know we, we we are like you know we are having a class here and there is some teacher or some student outside trying to know what is going on inside what lesson is being taught what chapter is being taught so what is he doing he is dropping he is dropping means if somebody tries to know furtively what you are doing what talk is going on okay that is called as eaves dropping so eaves drop this so this is they all begin with e long e sound now we come to the medial i have not written eaves drop because you know there is less sp space here eaves dropping is drop now move on to the medial now let me know the words where e sound this long e sound comes in between for example i had only written the word sheep you remember or seat for example seat this is seat i have directly written the transcription you want me to write this also well this is seat seat a sheep for that matter sheep now this is sheep how do you write this is sha okay and this is e and this is pa remember we don't call it p we call it pa and this is sha this is not there in the english alphabet hmm? we have this and and if we want to make sha then we combine it with h this sh gives us this sound sheep Yes. More words. Beat, for example, beat, beat that you count. Beat. Hmm. B e a d. Beat. Yes. Just tell me one more word from your side. Need. Need. Good. Very nice. Need. So need. Need. So how do we write? Need like this. So transcription, you see, is very easy. If you know the sound. that here you have the long e then and if you know the symbols you can easily transcribe the word and if you transcribe them correctly you get 5 out of 5 hmm so you know the initial position medial position now let us come to the final position where does it come finally yes c c very good c c so How do you write C like this? C. Hmm. Good. Plea. Plea. Very nice. Plea. Plea. Very good. Plea. So this is how you spell. Plea. Transcribe plea like this. Plea or he for that matter. He. Or say she. 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 You know. I. Yeah. She. You can write like this. She. This is S H E she, and this is H E. But this is, these are strong. Strong means is is strong trans is strong. What do I mean is sometimes you do not say always he. If say suppose if I say hmm, he's very regular, he's very regular. But you don't agree. When I say he's very regular, he's very regular. So I'm just saying he. He is very regular. Okay, this E. This is shorty. Okay, he's very regular. Then you say is he. Okay, so you prolong that e sound. So this is a strong sound here in she and he. She is very beautiful. She is very beautiful. When I say she is very beautiful, then I am saying this she. She is very beautiful. Is she? You say with surprise. Then you are saying this she. Is she? Okay. Now understand. So sometimes you have this difference in pronunciation. Yeah. So you are talking about final position of e. Yes. One or two more words from your side. Fee, for example, the school fee that you pay, the college fee that you pay. Okay. The tuition fee. 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 You write like this, and you transcribe it like this. Fee. 
Hmm? And your same rule goes with me also. Me and me. Sometimes you say me and sometimes you say me. Hmm? You were absent yesterday. Me. So when, when you are saying it with the emphasis, then you are pronouncing it strongly. That means you need prolonged E. I hope you know this. Yes, sir. Yes. This is easy. Yes, sir. Is there any problem anywhere? No, sir. No, sir. I, I hope you will be able to transcribe. You know, now we are just trying to do the symbols. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you more words in fact. Okay, we'll be, we'll be doing more words, but this just for the time being, so that you understand these symbols. The purpose is to make you familiar with the IPA symbols. What well, my purpose is to make you familiar with the IPA symbols. Okay, and we have started with the vowel sounds. Shall I rub it off? Yes, no, because we'll be moving on to uh, say shorty. Now it is you know very easy to transcribe words with this short sound. This is a long sound, and if you put two bars, remove remove the dots and put two bars. These slant lines are P requisite. You cannot avoid them. You have to have them. Otherwise, you know, the examiner would cut your half marks, deduct half marks. But don't say that if you are making just two lines and he would give you half marks, no. Certainly not, he won't give you. But if you write something like you have written it like this, this is correct. And if you have not put it or closed it between the slant lines, then he would give you only say one out of two. You know, those students who do not pay attention to these symbols, these sounds, they only find it difficult. Otherwise, you know, this is very easy and very interesting also. Learning English phonetics. You know, now, th th there is a difference also between some students ask me, because uh, many students have asked me, what is the difference between phonetics and phonology? Phonology. Well, when we are talking about uh, these symbols is 44 symbols, 44 sounds. In respective of any language, then we are talking about phonetics. And, and here, right at uh, present, we are talking about the English language, English alphabet. So, we are discussing English phonology. Okay, what are we dis discussing? English phonology. If you are talking about an individual language, like if you are talking about Hindi, alphabet or if you are talking about Udu alphabet or say English alphabet for that matter that means you are uh, say um, you are dealing with phonology and irrespective of any language you are talking about IP symbols then you are talking about phonetics so phonetics has got a very big canvas whereas phonology has got a small canvas micro level micro is phonology and macro is phonetics phonetics phonetics, phonetics. good this we are talking about e. so this is short e this is long e and this is short e hmm? so again you see this is centralized and this is front as well so this is centralized front unrounded vowel centralized front unrounded vowel hmm? and what kind of is it it is again closed vowel e why? Because your your lips remain spread. E E. Whether you say E or E, your lips are not rounded. They are unrounded. You know, we, we, we talk about two positions of lips. We say rounded or we say unrounded. In some cases, lips are rounded, and in some cases, lips are not rounded. When they are not rounded, you call them unrounded. So this is centralized front unrounded vowel between between see between close and half close so this is in between here it, the position is here this is between close and half close is it okay yes you just take it down somewhere do not forget it i said that this is centralized front unrounded close front 
centralized front unrounded vowel between close and half close position okay so where do you have you have this insect bit yes where do you have the sound sit okay lit lit okay yes come on fit fit very nice fit why not we do it the same way the way we did earlier initial medial and final positions hmm initial medial and final so let let so yeah it occurs in it okay it so here you have it is I, i'm i'm not writing words okay you know that you, you can very well guess that this is is do you want me to write well this is is this is english and this is also english there is no change in fact here and these words are very easy to transcribe why there is no change in them it is and in for example you also you don't have any change just the same way you write in english language and phonetically you also write the same way hmm so you know the initial position of e now let us come to the medial position you have already given me words like sit you said sit again is it in the way you write in english you write phonetically you also the same way sit head hmm head acha one thing i would like to tell you here here you know i have deliberately written h with capital why because in english language you write like this miss when you begin a sentence but here you never use capital letters you always write these symbols i mean these phonemes with the small letters so this is head this is the only difference head hmm is it is it fine with you or not yes sir okay can you tell me like and the word fishy fishy fi she this is fishy fishy okay so you you have this uh, uh, short sound short e here and your short e here and this is sh fishy now there is one more position left that is the final position okay let us do the final position yes yeah where do you have can you guess any word very for example is very smart so i will write very see this is very this is how you spell it hmm so this is this is how it is written very this is you know this is oh very short short oh this is called as shua in english what do we call it shua this is this is the most common sound the most common sound and it's means I, i when i say most common sound sounds means uh, it uh, occurs almost in every third or fourth word you would find it sure sure this is a very nice sound very okay yes more tiny. words hmm? tiny tiny okay tiny so tiny you write like this tai and ni tiny okay tiny this is how you write many many okay good many many you write like this but this is you know the, again you know this is how many would write but this is not the right pronunciation we don't call it many we call it many we call it many okay why the same sound you have here 10 this is not 10 this is 10 this is men many many okay it's not a broad sound here you are add but this is this sound this sound many yes more words come on penny penny very good penny very nice penny penny is a good word penny see here this is how you write penny and you transcribe penny how do you transcribe penny yes come on same way 
pen you write? Like the way you write ten? And then? I. Penny. Okay. So you have you, you have learnt two vowel sounds E, long E and short E. And we have seen the initial, medial and final positions of all of these two. And besides this, we have also learned the three term description. Hmm? Three term description of these, the, these uh, vowel sounds.